I'm not a caller. Who this? Hi, is this Mr. 4 a.m. Builds? Yeah, it sure is. I saw you on YouTube and was wondering, can you build me an entryway bench? Uh, are you a subscriber? Of course I am. Oh, I'm on the way! Like most projects, I start in the garage, breaking down the materials. First, here using my DIY track saw. You can watch that video if you want. And then moving on to the table saw. I'm working on the bench top here. Since this will be painted, I use 120 grit, then move to 180. And can you believe it? I found this random sheet of plywood that's nearly perfectly sized for the side pieces. I'm ripping this piece down for the front, and then here I am just batch cutting these two by fours that will be used for the inner supports. Good job, thanks boys. Hey, can we get a shout out to your guys' YouTube channels? Uh, Brody, Jet. That's it? That's just Brody and Jet? Yeah. Simple, thanks guys. Always take advantage of free labor when you got it. Now I'm just gonna assemble all the inner walls. Simple, top plate, bottom plate, studs, two screws each. Here I am chopping down the one by material that will be used on the front of the bench. One, for the shot. With the frame face down, we'll put pocket holes here, 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 and here. So you can see here, I got the face frame together. I got a one by six on the bottom. I have a one by three on the top. I, once it's all together, I've looked at it. I'm just not happy with the proportions of it. So I'm gonna take the one by three off the top. I found a one by four, four over in the corner. I'm gonna put that on, but that means that I'll have to take these vertical pieces off, cut them down, redrill the pocket holes. You know the drill. So I'm gonna do that, but I won't bore you with that. So in the next scene, if you see, uh, if, if you notice that this top piece is an inch bigger, that's why. Happens. I'm gonna go through on the face frame and fill any imperfections with a little plastic wood. Times when I need to keep a piece up vertically like this and I can't put a clamp on top of it because I need to put edge banding on, I'll just use one of these hand screw clamps and it holds it pretty steady. I'm gonna take my trim off tool and run it right down here on the side, but do be careful because sometimes it does gouge into it. Usually I use the router, but I don't really want to go outside. It is cold, it is dark. We're gonna give this a shot, see how it works out. See exactly here what I'm talking about, how it, it'll bite on the grain of the wood and it'll kind of run it in, run it into the edge a little bit. We should be able to sand that out, but that's why I'm not the biggest fan of that thing. Again, not happy with that. Now what I like to do is take a little sanding block. I'm just gonna knock all down, knock down all these edges. Here there's a little bit, here there's a little bit. Let's see if we can make it. So this side will be exposed. So I did put a little bit of the plastic wood on the end grain to see if it can soak up the paint and we can make that look as, as natural as possible there so you won't notice it from the side when you walk in the door. Time for some primer. 
So I'm really not a fan of painting and it's extremely boring to watch. So I got an idea. setup that I like to use when I just have a few pieces to cut. I just set my my miter saw here and I can slide it back and forth and I can just pull the number and it's it, it gives me good enough repeatable cuts if I just need to set something up pretty quick. I push my pieces down and over gives me an eighth inch gap here. So that means when I center them, it'll be a 16th on each side. So that's all I have to do is pull the number here, subtract an eighth, and that'll be the vertical pieces that I need. These pieces are a little bit shorter. I just throw a, a stop block with the clamp on there. Let's me slide it over and cut them accurately, repeatably, put everything away, good to go. We got an issue. So if you're gonna use the line on your tape measure, make sure you use the right one. Let me show you. But hey, we can fix it. I'll be right back. So being that these doors are just for show, I'm just gonna router a groove on the inside of them. It's gonna total be about a half inch deep, so we're gonna make two passes. We're gonna go quarter inch deep on both of them, take it nice and slow, reset it, and then do the other final, uh, the final depth on there. And because it's on the inside, in the inside corner, we are going to go clockwise compared to counterclockwise that you normally do with the router on outside. So inside, we're gonna go clockwise. We're gonna make two passes, take it nice and slow. So we got a little issue. We had a little burnage going here on the inside. I saw it when I was routing, but I didn't know what was happening, so I just kept sending it. But what happened was I didn't put this bearing on this bit the proper way. So I did go through and sand this one. It's all good. It's gonna get painted anyway. Um, it should be fine, but yeah, just make sure you put the bearing on the right way. Hey, I'm back. Sorry, that looked like I was talking so much I didn't have a chance to get in. So here I am marking out where I'm gonna have to put my screws in for the cabinet doors. I had the face frame where the shadow gaps are painted all black. I glue and brad nail the front face frame on. Then I put these trim head screws on those lines I made earlier so that when I put the faux doors on, everything's set. I even out the door spacing by using the old playing card trick. Speaking of that, do you guys ever play Pinochle? Let me know in the comments below. My dad plays Pinochle. I'm like, how old are you, dude? I'm not sure if the homeowner knew I was recording this install and I was a little too embarrassed to ask. So if you notice the camera angles are kind of low and I don't do any talking, that's why. I throw a heavy coat of PL Premium on everything. That should hold it, but then I throw a few nails in just in case. I always like to put a little painter's tape along that glue line just to prevent any squeeze out that may occur from getting on the floor.
here my screws are only going to stick through about an inch so that it just goes through the hardwood and into the subfloor and doesn't hit anything below. I pre-mark and then put my screws in on the back wall stud just so that when I hold it up it makes install a breeze. For the top, we'll just use some more PL Premium. Then we're gonna sit on it and then throw some nails into it. And of course I'm gonna patch those holes. You didn't think I was just gonna leave them, did you? Think I'm a savage? And yes, I touched them up with a little paint. I just forgot to show you. Hey friends, I appreciate you watching me build the entryway bench. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I did building it. Maybe learned a few things along the way, or at least were entertained. If you're curious about the new backdrop, stay tuned for an upcoming video. And until then, get out there, buy cool tools, build cool stuff, and tell your friends about it. See you.